The way people die can be brutal, but what if some people could have prevented their deaths from not doing silly things that ended their lives? In today's video, I'm going to be listing five stupid deaths that have happened throughout history. And I am aware that calling them stupid can be subjective, but they are pretty silly and they could have been prevented if these people didn't do these silly actions, really. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you don't know what's going on here, I am a horror artist and I like to draw what I talk about in the videos. Now I like scary facts, true crime, I like aliens, conspiracies, ghosts, paranormal, any of that sort of stuff and I love to draw. So I combine them together to hopefully bring you a unique experience across those genres. And I do my best to bring you the most accurate information, any consistent information that is across the, uh, the web that I see will go into these videos. And if there is anything else you'd like to add to these stories, put them in the comments section below because I would like to hear more information. And if you like any of the artwork that I do in my videos, I have a Redbubble store where you can buy the prints. Just head over there. The links are in the description. And I also have an Etsy store where I like to create my own felt toy patterns. So if you are a creative person and you like to create that type of stuff out of felt or even material, because I've got some plushy patterns on there as well, head across there. There is horror characters from movies and I've got my own characters that I've made up myself also on there as well. With that being said, let's get on with the video and let's get on with the drawing and I'm still waiting for someone to send me their cold weather because it is cooling down here so I am grateful so you won't be hearing me whinge too much in the future. <laughs> Charles was an English politician and the fourth Baron Mohun of Oakhampton and was notorious for his love of participating in duels with swords which started when he had to pay off a gambling debt in 1692 when he was roughly 17 years old. His family history showed that his family had a weakness for mindless violence and killing. He was tried for murder twice before the age of 20, even though one instance was not entirely caused by him, but by his friend, Officer Richard Hill, who stabbed actor Richard Mountford in the chest while Charles just sat there and watched because he didn't want any competition to win over an actress named Anne Bracegirdle. Richard fled the country, leaving Charles in hot water. Charles went on to kill another man in a duel in 1697 named Richard Coote in Leicester Square, but once again was acquitted of murder. After that, he took a seat in the House of Lords. Charles ended up accompanying the Earl of Macclesfield on a diplomatic mission, so they became close in which he left his estate to Charles when he died, but he had to defend his estate for over a decade as James Douglas, the fourth Duke of Hamilton, disputed the inheritance and tried to lay claim to it. Over the years, the dispute got worse and worse for Charles and James was leaving for Paris, so before James left, Charles challenged him to a duel to be fought in Hyde Park on the 15th of November 1712. Both attended the duel and both charged at each other with their swords and both mortally wounded each other and they both died at the scene. This stupidity changed the legislation in the government to ban swords from duels and only allowed guns as they were much quicker and caused less suffering. Francois was a French chef in the late 1600s and was a very highly respected chef to the elite Condé family where he also resided with them in the Chateau de Chantilly. He was a perfectionist and took a lot of pride in his meal preparation as it was fine cuisines he specialised in. One year, the Condes were having a two-day celebration banquet for the visit of King Louis XIV and his entourage of 2,000 people at Chantilly. This feast was going to be the epitome of fine dining that was ever going to be prepared with absolutely top-notch ingredients and recipes. The first day of the banquet went off without a hitch and there was an abundance of food that even catered for the extra guests that turned up but on the second day seafood had to be served as it was a tradition like a Good Friday service where you only eat white meats but he was informed that there was 
not going to be enough seafood to feed everyone in the royal entourage as the order he had put in was not going to turn up. So Francois did not want to be a disappointment so he calmly and promptly went into his room, angled his sword up on the door at chest height and proceeded to stab himself with his sword through his heart and committed suicide. Francois would rather die than face the royal entourage as a failure and be humiliated. His body was found when someone came to tell him that his order of fish had arrived a little later, but nonetheless had arrived, so his death was all in vain. William was an American inventor who revolutionized the printing industry due to his contribution to improving the Richard March Ho Rotary Press, along with other inventions such as the shingle cutting machine, hay press, seed planter, and a lathe cutting machine. In 1843, William's design of the rotary press was far more efficient than Ho's design. William's design allowed continual automatic feeding of large rolls of paper through the rollers, which eliminated hand feeding. It was self-adjusting, printed on both sides of the paper rolls, folded the paper, and finally cutting the paper with a built-in sharp knife that rarely needed sharpening. The machine printed up to 12,000 sheets an hour, but once tweaked, it was sped up to 30,000 sheets an hour. On the 3rd of April 1867, one of his new presses was being installed into the Philadelphia Public Legend newspaper. He was making adjustments to the machine and tried to get a driving belt onto a pulley when he kicked it into place, but his leg got caught, crushing it in the machine. It got gangrene a few days later, so he was admitted into hospital to get his leg amputated, but died during the operation. Henry was an English military man that became the second lieutenant in the Derbyshire Regiment in 1893 at the age of 19, but like many soldiers on the battlefield, Henry did not die on the battlefield. Henry took a holiday with other fellow soldiers to St Moritz, Switzerland in January 1907. Him and his friends wanted to enjoy a thrilling and dangerous ride on the famous Cresta Toboggan Run. Cresta is roughly 1.2 kilometers long and had a drop of about 55 meters with many hard and difficult curves which create the thrill and because some of the banks curved almost perpendicular, one wrong or slight mistake will send you and the toboggan over the sides. A person lays down on the racing skeleton as the toboggan is called, stomach first, and the toboggan wears clawed feet that resemble dragon feet or rakes to slow down on the curves. You steer the skeleton with jerks, little twitches and body weight movement back and forth on a sliding seat. The toboggan run had two sharp bends, the first being called battle door and the second one being called shuttlecock. Henry went down and got to battle door where he fell off his toboggan at around 100 kilometers an hour and hit rocks and stones and suffered severe internal injuries and died not long after that, at the age of 32. Sigmund Neuberger, also known as the Great Lafayette, was a German illusionist and was the highest paying magician of his time. He had smooth and impressive quick change routines and some illusions required a lion and other various animals that wowed his audience and made him very popular. Sigmund's most prized possession was his dog named Beauty, which was a terrier given to him as a puppy by fellow illusionist Harry Houdini. The dog lived a very lavish lifestyle just like Sigmund, but four days before Sigmund's show opened in the Empire Palace Theatre, Beauty died. Sigmund wanted his dog buried in the Pierce Shield Cemetery, but the Edinburgh Council firstly resisted, but then only agreed to the burial of his dog if Sigmund himself was buried there too upon his death. Unfortunately, this was not going to be far away. Four days after Beauty's death, Sigmund was performing his signature illusion, called the Lion's Bride. A lantern was accidentally knocked over and set fire to the set, which caught a light in minutes. 
The audience did not evacuate straight away as they thought it was part of the act, but quickly realized that it was a bad situation and got the hell out of there. Many people got trapped on the stage when the curtain lowered and jammed. Sigmund ended up initially getting out of the theatre but made a silly decision to go back in to save his horse but got trapped and died. Ten other people from the company died in the fire as well including Sigmund's body double that was accidentally mistaken for Sigmund and sent away for cremation. Once the real Sigmund was recovered, he was cremated and his ashes were paraded through the streets of Edinburgh to 250,000 fans before being buried at the cemetery beside his beloved dog, Beauty. So let me know what you think about these five stupid deaths that I had talked about today. Now, do you think they were silly? Do you think they could have been prevented? Or do you think that they would just be bound to happen let me know what you think in the comment section down below now for the illustration that i decided to do for this video today is i decided to combine all the elements from the five stupid deaths into one picture so this is the vision i got when i wrote down elements to each one and sort of generated an idea in my brain i came up with this like creature that is standing there looking pretty happy in a way but he's got all these swords jabbed into him because there was i, I sort of made that the, mo the main focal point because a couple of the stories involved weapons and involved swords so that was probably the biggest focal point and then I went ahead and decided to do the leg of this creature like a toboggan to represent that story of that soldier who died in that uh, toboggan accident and then the other leg of the creature is completely gone it's been torn off to represent the printer accident and then uh, finally the fire uh, I represented that I'm not real good with fire I do try to um, to paint fire but I sort of have to sort of work on that but I decided to do fire coming off the hand of this creature to represent that but all in all this creature looks like he's having a great time suffering all these horrific incidents all in one so yeah that was the image that I got and that's what I drew and I actually drew this on uh, a mixed media pad Montmarty pad which has actually Montmarty's actually redeemed themselves with me with this I actually really really enjoy this paper and I'm probably going to be buying it in the future because it allows me to shade in my pictures smoothly um, way better than the other papers that I have been using um, to do because they're a bit rougher and um, yeah, I've sort of been trying to find a way to shade better um, and make it work and it's, you know, the whole time it's been all in the paper. So yeah, I'm going to be buying this paper because if you have been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I do have a love-hate relationship with Montmarty. Some products are rubbish and some products are surprisingly really good for a student grade art supply so this has really sold me on on this mixed media paper so i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to keep getting it but anyway that is it from me hopefully you enjoyed this video today and if you like this kind of content like and subscribe dislike it i couldn't give two shits because it all goes towards the algorithm for other people to find me that may like this content hopefully you watch what is left of this video and i will see you guys in the next one bye